Hi, beautiful friends and book lovers. I hope that you are all doing well. My name is Heather, and if you're new here at Heather's Book Review, I typically like to read and review thrillers, as you can see behind me, but I will read the occasional um, super hyped up fiction novel. You can connect with me on Instagram and Goodreads. It's just the same handle at Heather's Book Review. Um, but today I am going to be reviewing what I like to call a whodunit mystery. This review has been a long time coming because I read this book quite a long time ago. I got it for my January book of the month pick for 2021. It just took me a decent amount of time to read it. I think I got it as an add-on. Um, if you're unfamiliar with book of the month, it's a book um, subscription for $14.99 a month and you can choose from five hardcover books um, from five different genres typically. Um, but then you can also choose an add-on for only 10 bucks. So for example, the last time, my last purchase for August, 2021, I got, this is my main book. And then I got Cherie Le Pen's new book for 10 bucks and then Project Hill Mary for 10 bucks. So, I mean, these books retail for, this one's $27.99. So I think overall the book subscription is like relatively cheap, especially for hardcover books. Um, so if you're interested, I do have a referral link in the book description um, box below where if you go through that, I get a free book, which is awesome. But yeah, so I got this in January and then I postponed it, postponed reading it for a little bit, just like kept putting it off, kept putting it off. And then I read it and I was like, I wish I would have read this sooner because it's actually pretty good. So if you're new here, how I design my videos is I will tell you what the book is about, give you my ratings, and then I'll do a book chat part of the video for those of us who have read. Um, if you're here because you've already read the book and you wanna hear my thoughts on it that contain spoilers, just go ahead and click that time skip stamp in the description box below. That will bring you to the spoiler section of the video. But for now, I'm going to um, tell you what The Survivors is about. I'm going to read the inside flap so you can get a good idea. It's actually a pretty thin inside flap. They don't give a whole lot of information away, which I really like. Um, so it says, Karen Elliott's life changed forever on the day a reckless mistake led to devastating consequences. The guilt that still haunts him resurfaces during a visit with his young family to the small coastal community he once called home. Karen's parents are struggling in a town where fortunes are forged by the sea. Between them all is his absent brother, Finn. When a body is discovered on the beach, long-held secrets threaten to emerge. A sunken wreck, a missing girl, and questions that have never washed away. Stunning and atmospheric, Jane Harper's The Survivors is another triumph by the acclaimed author of The Dry and The Lost Man. I haven't read either of those. And then down here it says, even the deepest secrets rise to the surface. Um, so... Kieran, I'm going to be looking at my <laughs> notes here. Um, so basically, he goes, but Kieran, our main character, goes back home um, where he is really struggling being back home for, for something that um, happened quite a long time ago. And he goes with his wife and their new baby. Okay, so looking back at my notes, I did read this. Um, I think I read this at the beginning, maybe end of May. So it's been a little bit, but... I did say that I was influenced in a bad way when I was reading this book because I actually saw um, on Bookstagram like a lot of mediocre reviews for this. And whenever a book like first comes out and the reviews aren't that great, like of course I'm not jumping to read it, right? Like if someone's like, oh, this book is amazing and I'm seeing a ton of five-star reviews, yeah, I'm going to want to read that really quickly. But if a book is just getting average rating after average rating, it's like, that's probably why I postponed this for so long. Um, but I don't know what the heck, why nobody else really liked it as much as I did, but I actually really liked it. So I'm excited for the book chat part of this to um, chat with those of you who have read because I actually thought it was really good. I think a lot of people rated it average because it's a slow burn. And I agree with everyone on that aspect. It is a slow burn, like whodunit mystery feel with a small town setting everyone knows everyone kind of feel which i love those settings <laughs> i don't know what it's i don't know what it is but like a small town you know on like the seashore like that is like you're you're set up for success there so as you know from the synopsis kieran is involved um with some sort of accident in the past 
and you as a reader do not find out what that accident is for several chapters in. Like I remember sitting there reading the book and being like, wow, like I still don't know what's going on. And like, I'm a decent chunk into the book. Um, quite a few characters introduced um, and you all find out how they're related to like this past incident that happened. Um, I do remember I was reading this with like little post-it tabs because you find it's like all the characters are kind of like introduced at once. So I was like tabbing every time someone new was introduced. Um, typically if I have my phone on me, I'll just like take notes in the notes, um, app, but like, I don't know why, maybe, I don't know why I didn't have my phone on me. But anyways, I found keeping notes slash tabs helpful. Um, because like I said, you kind of get a, an information overload and then the book starts to like become a slow burn. So if you're not new here, you know that I love when my prediction is wrong and it was wrong in this book, which I loved. Um, I read this actually pretty quickly. It's a decent book. It's like close to 400 or a decent size book. It's close to like 400 pages. Um, and I read this in like three days, which is pretty quick for me. And I was guessing all the characters. Like I said, you like are information overload in the beginning and then it's a slow burn. And you know, that leads the reader, you know, that provides you time to, you know, like find out a little bit more information about this and this character. And yeah, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people had different motives and it was just fun. It's not a predictable read. Thank goodness. I feel like depending on when I post this review, I just said in my review for, um, we were never here that like, I have read so many predictable looks, uh, looks books lately and this one was anything but so I liked it I will leave um, a link for you to purchase the book off of Amazon in the book um, description box if you are interested in it um I think I wrote down here that the setting was Tasmania is that correct I don't know I also wrote that it was definitely a Pisces dream setting I'm a Pisces I love being by the water um I thought the concept of diving by, there's a lot of like diving um, by like shipwrecks in this book, which was just so cool to visualize because I like the water. Like the ocean doesn't freak me out. It freaks my husband out. He hates it. He said, he'll never go on a cruise with me because he <laughs> doesn't want to be all the way out like in the ocean. I love it. Like I love the feeling of being all the way out there. I don't know. But the small fishing town where like everyone knows everyone and like scuba diving by some shipwrecks. I don't know. It was just... I was really immersed in it and like a setting, a, the setting is like such an important pivotal piece of the book, right? A lot of the reason why I hated Survive the Night, I'll link that book review up here for you. That book setting was like the same freaking thing, like over and over, you're just in the car, you're in the car, you're in the car, you're in the car. This book, you're in like a fun setting by the seashore. You can um, also like be in the shipwreck version of the books. I don't know. I think I'm just rambling now about how much I love the setting, but I think it really made for, I think it just made the book. So I wrote down here in my notes that like, you find out who's behind everything and then the book kind of just ends, but like not in a bad way. Um, I actually appreciated that the book didn't like drag on for another 30 to 40 pages, like after the climax, because I feel like sometimes that happens and it's like, then it just drags on for like, I don't know why, but like this book kind of just like ends, but like abruptly, but like you get all the pieces and it's good. So, um, I feel like not a, not a lot of books do that anymore. Like it's like, they like, you reach the high point and then you're like strung along for a little bit more and you're like, well, I already know what happened. So, so on my little bookish rating scale here, I'm giving this an enjoyable read. I was torn. I wanted to, I, it's really close to like, go get this book now because it is good. Like it is a mystery who done it. Like it's good, but I feel like I only give that top tier rating for books that like I'm truly jazzed about. And I am jazzed about this one, but like it's not, it's probably not gonna make my top 10 of 2021. It might, it would just be on like the lower end of it. But just for the sake of, you know, staying truthful and staying consistent with my ratings, it's going to get an enjoyable read, but just know that it's like up there. Um, it's definitely like if you have a Kindle and you're looking for a good whodunit mystery, get it from the link below because I think you'll like it. 
I wrote down that the characters weren't annoying. Um, it's enough to keep you guessing. Everyone has motives. I already talked a lot about <laughs> the scenery and setting, but the actual scenes in the book like had me invested. I felt like I was watching a movie. Um, I'm kind of slightly ashamed that I put it off for so long because I really truthfully liked it. So now I am going to go ahead and get into the book chat part of the video. Um, for those of us who have read, so this will contain spoilers. Um, if you're new here, I would love if you could hit that subscribe button and that post notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new bookish related video. Okay, referencing my notes big time, it's been a minute since I read this, but it looks like I had a couple thoughts in the beginning. Like Sean and Olivia used to have a thing in the past, but he was like significantly older than her, right? Um, and then I remember like Ash would always be jealous that she would talk to Sean at parties and stuff. So like that kind of painted Ash and almost like a, I'm like, is he going to end up being like a stalker? Like what's going on? Like, why is he getting so jealous kind of thing? Another thought I remember having was did Bronte know something like was Olivia cheating on Ash with Sean and then like Bronte found out and Liam somehow like got wrapped into the whole thing. That was another prediction I had. Another thought I had was did Bronte and Liam end up arguing at the beach even though like despite the neighbor saying that she didn't hear anything and did Liam almost run down Kieran and Mia while they were walking home in road rage. That was another, like I was like all over the place here. I'm just walking you through the thoughts I had while I was reading it because that's what makes like a whodunit so fun for me was like, I was on this train of thought and then I was on this one, and then I was on this one. I did not see it coming that it was Sean. I actually thought that Mia had something to do with everything. Another train of thought I had was the comment that Brian, um, remember that was Kieran's dad made, um, Finn and Kieran's dad made where he said, I thought that girl was going to take care of it. Now remember he had, I, I believe dementia, um, but it was almost like alluding to the fact like, did Finn get a girl pregnant? Um, so then I was thinking that it was Gabby. And then when we found out that her backpack was indeed discovered on the boat, I was like, oh yeah, Finn totally got her pregnant. He took her out on the boat. He killed her because she was pregnant. Uh, nope. Okay, the amount of times at that damn garden that Ash worked so hard on at his grandmother's old house that like that author lived in or whatever, the amount of times that garden was brought up, I was like, okay, maybe Gabby is buried underneath there. Like, why do they keep referencing the damn garden? And then the author like throws in that joke, like, oh, do you think there's a body under this garden? And I was cracking up because it's just like, you know, they obviously mentioned the garden over and over and over. So the reader does exactly what I did, like assuming that the body is buried under the garden, like how cliche. So I was totally cracking up when that was, you know, brought up in the book. I thought that was a nice little um, piece of humor for us, but also like throwing in another loophole for the reader. So yeah, as you can see, I really liked the book. Um, I flew through it despite the size. So Leave in the video what you guys, or leave in the comments what you thought about the book. I really liked it. I do want to check out some other books by this author because I did enjoy the writing style. Um, as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye you guys.